Yo. How's it hanging, bruh? I hope y'all are good. I pray for your peace and comfort in Christ, that you would be comforted with the comforts that are from God. Hallelujah. Because true comfort only comes from God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and that you would just enjoy the entrance that Jesus Christ himself is fashioning for you. Got a lot of bridezillas. But we also got people who are genuinely enjoying Jesus Christ as life. Jesus Christ as milk and as meat. Um, enjoying his high priestly ministry, him being our head, us being his body. Um, this video might be upsetting to some people. Uh, but oh well. <laughs> uh, I hope you'll actually hear what I'm saying. Um, anyways, people that still argue against the grace of God, people that still argue against God's method of justification, what are you what do you stand to gain? Honestly ask yourself this question. You are fighting for self-righteousness, for your own works, for religion, for thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt love thy neighbor and God with all your heart, sorrow, and mind, strength, and you deceive yourself and you say, oh, yeah, that's easy. I got this. No, you don't. But you fight for all of those things as if that's your salvation. What do you stand to gain from fighting for Moses rather than standing by faith in the gift of eternal life that is offered by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son. Ask yourself, what do you stand to gain? If you get mad and you get angry at that question, good. You should ask yourself, what do I actually stand to gain? What is actually the truth? Why am I so angry when people talk about Jesus Christ? And I hope your conscience does get pricked. And I hope the Lord is riding you like a horse and breaks you so that you would hear the truth and believe the gospel and enjoy salvation that is only in Jesus Christ. Like, what do you stand to gain? Do you love being angry and hostile towards God and other people so much that you would continually fight against the truth, against the gospel, against grace, against Jesus Christ? I don't know, man. Seems kind of like a bad, seems like a bad gig, you know? Seems like a lose-lose. And it doesn't seem very enjoyable. It's okay for you to let go of your flesh. I know it's hard. Believe me, I know it's hard. But it's okay. <laughs> Nobody's looking at your flesh expecting something from it. You shouldn't be looking at your flesh expecting something from it. Well, actually, a lot of people are looking at you expecting something from your flesh. <laughs> But God is not looking, which is the most important part. God is not looking at you, at your flesh, and saying, Yes, do everything I have commanded. Obey Moses. I am expecting your strength. I am expecting your efforts. I am expecting all of this stuff from you. No, he's not. He already dealt with all expectations, all demands, all burden, burdens, Everything that was contrary to us and nailed it to the cross. Thank you, Jesus Christ. It's been dealt with. The demand is off of you. You can relax. So what do you stand to gain by constantly fighting for Moses? As if that's... As if Moses is God. As if, as if Moses is your salvation. 
If you hear that and you get angry and you're like, you just love your sin, guess what? You're the one who's being pricked in your conscience. I'm not. I'm chilling. The Lord <laughs> has broken me continually so that I would see what the flesh really is, so that I would see my death with Christ, so that I would see Christ being risen again, hallelujah, for our justification, so that I would see the new man, so that I would see that God's grace is sufficient, so that I would taste and see that God is good. So when people accuse me and lie and slander and do all these things, bruh, I'm not bothered. Why? Because I can see through it all. I, I can see that all you're doing is fighting to elevate your flesh. All you're doing is fighting to puff yourself up all you're doing is fighting for dead works. You're fighting against God's method of justification. You're fighting against spiritual things. So why would I be bothered at all by it? I used to be, sure, when I didn't quite have the discernment, when I didn't quite have the understanding, and also when I didn't quite have like the experiential knowledge and increase of Christ himself as my life, which that just comes through time. That just comes through the Lord giving the increase. There's nothing you can do to earn that, to make it go faster, to make it go slower. Everyone's got their own walk with the Lord, and the Lord gives the increase. People water, people plant, probably the other way around. People plant, people then water. <laughs> and God is the one who gives the increase. You don't got to worry about it. You can lay down your flesh, and you can believe in Jesus Christ. And, believe it or not, guess what? The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. I'm sorry if that irritates you, but I'm not sorry. I hope I hope you get offended by it and genuinely ask yourself, yo, why am I so offended that he says the law is not of faith? Well, all I'm doing is quoting scripture. All I'm doing is using, hey, come on. All I'm doing is speaking the word. All I'm doing is pointing to Christ and him crucified and his finished redemptive work. If you don't like his finished redemptive work because there's not enough for your dead works, then you should be honest with yourself and be like, you know what? Why is this? Why do I really love my own works? Why do I not want to hold on to Jesus Christ? What do you stand to gain by fighting against God and his method of justification? He is just and the justifier of all who believe in Jesus Christ. We have, we are given, hallelujah, the imputed righteousness of God solely by faith in Jesus Christ. If you don't like imputed righteousness as a gift by faith in Jesus Christ, it's probably because you want your own self-righteousness, which you can build up in the law, which amounts to nothing because you want to be put on display. You either want to replace Christ, you want to become the heir apart from Christ. You want to be central to everything that's going on rather than Christ being the center. God's focus is Jesus Christ. It's not your religion. So a lot of that, I know that was mostly spoken to people who are like unbelievers, but a lot of that can also apply to people who are Galatianized. People who are saved because they believe the gospel, albeit they probably heard the watered down version of you get to believe in Jesus, you died for your sins, you get to go to heaven. But now, here's the accursed part, here's the perversion of the gospel, but now God's expecting from you, oh, red flag, no he's not, it is finished. God completed everything already on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to the cross for us, died for our sins, was buried, and rose again so that we could have life, peace, joy, so God could be our satisfaction, so we could... I mean, so much, <laughs> so much. But anyways, so many people who are Galatianized who think, oh, now that now that I believe that I get to go to heaven, what do I got to do here? Oh, well, I've got a mind. What is the, re the religious world, this religious evil age, the institutional church, what does it tell me about Christianity? I'm not actually going to go to God and learn it. I'm just going to go to... Whoever's tried it before me, I'm just going to go to my local church and surely they're the authority. 
No, they're not. Jesus Christ is. Um, they think that you've got to mind your P's and Q's. You've got to clean up your flesh. That you can't come near to God if you have all this unrepentant sin. That you've got to repent of all your sins in order to be saved, stay saved. That you'll never actually know if you're saved until you get to the throne. And even if you are, Jesus is going to be there with a list of all your sins ready to beat you. And you better occupy and redeem the time. You're getting lazy, blah, blah, blah. You just, you just love your sin because you want to rest in Christ. Oh, blah, 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 all this stuff. Everything that I've said can apply to Galatianized believers, in which, from my personal experience, some of the recent ones, recent ones that I've talked to, is, oh, yeah, you can live however you want, but you're going to be held accountable. Okay, tell me, who paid for sin? Is sin already paid for, or is it an ongoing process? Is my conscience supposed to be purged by the blood of Jesus Christ and I can rest in him? Or am I supposed to be constantly afraid of judgment and hellfire because I make mistakes and I sin? So you're telling me that in order to have peace, I need to not sin. So uh, my peace with God, my Christian life is actually not Jesus Christ. It's my own works. It's religion. It's Moses. That's what you're saying. Whether you think you are or not, and if that upsets you, big deal. These are honest questions you should be asking yourself. If you're serious, if you're like, you know what, yeah, no, I, I am serious about God. Great, then ask these questions. Ask these questions honestly and see what happens. Why do you fight so much for law? Why do you fight so much for Moses? Why do you fight so much for your flesh? Why do you fight so much for the idea and the unsound doctrine? The sugar-coated nonsense of the tickling of the ears and the puffing up of the flesh. This covetousness of, no, I'm going to be something and God's going to be proud of that. Nowhere other than, yeah, Jesus died for my sins, I get to go to heaven. Then nowhere is Jesus talked about. It is me, 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 me. Hold on. It's me, and, and then it's me again. And it's, I'm such a good little boy or girl. I cussed a little bit less today, therefore God's pleased with me, and that's how I know I have peace is because I'm keeping the law. Is Christ your life? Do the just live by faith? Is the law of faith? Mm, no, it's not. If you pick it up in one point, you perked it up in all of it. If you fail it in one point, you failed in all of it. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all of those things. So are you going to tell me that it's just a work in progress for you? That you are cursed until you keep it perfectly? Let me know. When, when is that going to happen? When are you going to keep it perfectly? What's the ETA on that? If you say any time at all in this life, you're wrong, you're a liar, and you're deceived. Because you are saying that there is a possibility of you being sinless. To which I would say... What was the point of Jesus Christ coming and dying for your sin then if you could be sinless? And then it goes back to justification. It goes back to the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. What did he do? What did he accomplish? Good girl. You want a treat? All right. Just walking my dog. Come on. It comes back to justification. If you think, I'm a good little boy. I'm a good little girl. I'm going to mind my P's and Q's. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to tithe. And God's going to be pleased with me about it. And that you can have peace so long as you obey the laws and commandments. That you can know that you're saved so long as you are focused on Moses and incremental law keeping. And ignore, ignore very obvious scripture that says the law is not of faith. And cursed is everyone that does not continue in all these things that are written. If you ignore those verses and a bunch of other ones while saying, yes, this is how I please God, you are deceived and you are openly believing a lie. So if you are serious, you should ask yourself, what do you mean I'm believing a lie? Aren't I supposed to do these good things? 
quote unquote good things, as if those are the good works, as if just keeping the law are these good works, as if keeping the law, again, is something that you one can do, which you cannot. The law was weak through sinful flesh. And Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in his flesh. Your emulation is not holiness. Your emulation is carnal. Your emulation is dead works. Your emulation is not holiness. Jesus Christ is holiness. If it doesn't make sense to you that the just shall live by faith, that's fine. That's okay. Don't get bored. Don't get busy in the law. Walk by faith. Let the Lord give the increase. Don't try and force an answer. And in the meantime, go back into leaven. Go back into the institutional church or wherever you go that constantly preaches from James 2 and Matthew 7 and quoting things out of context, not understanding the timeline of the books written and what was going on at that time, not understanding what was being talked about in those books and just outright quoting scripture like Matthew 7, Lord, Lord, depart from me, or sorry, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these good things in your name and cast out devils in your names? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. You worked at iniquity. You, you workers of iniquity, excuse me. And they're like, look, 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 see, if you don't do more than the Pharisees, he's going to say, depart from me because you're workers of iniquity. No, that is quite literally the satanic inversion of the scripture. He is talking to Pharisees. He is talking to people who trust in their own works to be saved. He's that as they say, Lord, didn't we do ABC in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? They're coming in boasting. They're coming by their own works. They're coming some other way, like a thief and a robber. They are not coming forward by faith. They're coming forward by sight. They're coming forward by, by saying, look at what we've done. Look at my works in religion. I'm accepted, right? That is their iniquity, is their unbelief, is their rejection of the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Yet people continually quote that and quote so many others out of context to what? What is the root cause? What is the root motivation of every single time there is a scripture a verse that is used out of context, that is used incorrectly, it is self-justification, it is a building up of a righteousness apart from Jesus Christ, it is a incremental law keeping, it is a it is a selfish boasting in the flesh, it is a puffing up of the flesh, it is a clinging to your own dead works instead of of coming forward by faith in Jesus Christ and holding forward the word of light, the gospel of Jesus Christ, rather than holding Christ and putting Christ on display, you are trying to put yourself on display. You are trying to put Moses on display and your efforts through the law. You are trying to put that on display rather than saying, look at what Jesus Christ has done for us. You would, you would rather say, look at what I do for God. Look at all this that I do for God. And what is really happening is you, I mean, if people have the discernment, we can see, hey, look, I lie in God's name. Hey, look, I boast in myself in God's name. Hey, look, I ignore Jesus Christ and I am... And I'm the heir. Ignore him. Ignore the son of God, God the son. Ignore him. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so great. I'm so holy. And you're putting a sack of dead, corrupt, condemned flesh in people's faces and saying, look, 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 look at me. I'm so cute. I'm so good. I'm so holy. I'm so righteous. And anytime someone says, no, 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 Jesus Christ. You get offended. That's just how it be sometimes. And it's unfortunate because you could be enjoying your justification. Go and study what justification really is. If you think justification is I get to go to heaven because Jesus died for me, that's fine. You need to go and learn the 
definition and the meaning of justification and everything that is secured for you in justification so that you can move on to the meat of the word and stop being tossed around by every wind of doctrine by people who want to promote themselves, their works, self-righteousness, and constantly try to hide your eyes and ears from Jesus Christ. They want to dull your senses. They want you drunk. They want you paying their salary. They want you for their attendance records. They want all of these things strictly because they are selfish. They are in the flesh. They are carnal. And they do not understand spiritual things. Again, that could be because they actually have a false gospel and they are unbelievers. Or they are hirelings who are getting their payment through your Fake virtue signaling, flattering that your attendance, your tithing, that's their wage. They will not protect you when a wolf comes because when a wolf comes, they say, oh, look, you know what? We got to practice our love walk and we got to understand that everyone's at different places and everyone can have a different opinion about scripture. Like, nah, nah, you can't. You got to mark and avoid. Those people, the hirelings do not want to protect you. They want their, they want their wage. And we do not tolerate wolves. We do not tolerate false gospels and unsound doctrine. No, we do not. That is not your love walk. That is your idiocy walk. That is you willingly saying, you know what? I want to damage myself. I want to damage those around me. I want to cause confusion. I want to be subject to manipulation and guile. And you know what? I would just love to be lied to. If you are under the guise, under... The umbrella of, oh, this is my good little Christian love walk. No, it ain't. You're being disobedient to the word, to the truth, by allowing false gospels, by not marking and avoiding wolves, by not marking, by not marking and avoiding those full of Galatian error. We have obeyed the truth and we have believed the gospel. Hallelujah. We do not deviate from the gospel. We do not deviate from Jesus Christ as life. We do not deviate from Christ and him crucified. And guess what? You he- Some people may hear that and they're like, oh, that's too simple. There's got to be more. Yeah, but the simplicity in Christ is a depth of eternity and the riches of Christ of the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory, is expanding and expanding and being illuminated to us in greater and greater detail every day, every week, every month. But because it's not something that you can put in strength and effort through your flesh and in religion, which there's no ability for you to get an immediate sense of gratification and satisfaction and flattery. There's nobody there to to caress and soothe your flesh as the just shall live, the just shall walk by faith. It's like an addiction. It's like people have a religious addiction and the dopamine and the serotonin hits and again, the flattery um, and the, the participation in guile and subversion tickles the flesh and keeps them drunk just enough to where they remain veiled. And that veil is done away in Christ. Again, so much of this can be applied to unbelievers and those who are Galatianized. Because it's the same, it's getting drunk on Jezebel's wine. It's getting, it's not being sober-minded. It's allowing false gospels, allowing unsound doctrine under the pretext or the pretense, whatever, dude, English is hard. Under the idea of, again, love walk, fake virtue signaling, this fleshly definition of love and kindness. Nah, man, love is standing for the truth. Love is walking by faith in Jesus Christ. Love is telling the false teachers and the Galatianized believers. Love is telling them, hey, look, you're wrong. It's Jesus Christ. What are you going to do? <laughs> you're going to believe or are you going to get offended and reject? Um, and I'm like using a lot of 
like oversimplified generalization and things like that because there there are a ton of nuances to all of this. Our walk is very it's very much a personal experience, but scripture is not of private interpretation. The truth is there. The truth is Jesus Christ. The just shall live by faith. How many times am I going to say that? But again, the law is not of faith. What do you stand to gain by fighting for Moses? Why will you not fight for Jesus Christ? Why will you not stand for Jesus Christ and suffer the persecution and suffer the withdrawals from the addiction that is religion and the flattery and the quote unquote love walk? Why will you not suffer those things? If you're so serious about God, why will you not suffer those things and come out from the institutional church, come out from the leaven, come out from the false gospels, come out from the wolves and the hirelings. You might suffer in the in the in the meantime in the in the short time, in the near future. Dude, English is hard. <laughs> you'd think that I was. <laughs> you'd think that I would. Uh, I was a native speaker, but I mean I am. But it's, just, it's ridiculous, man. Why will you not come out and suffer the persecution if you're so serious about God? Oh, is it because that your version of persecution is just actually a display in the flesh? It's your sackcloth and ashes. It's your complaining and moaning amongst other people in religion and saying, woe is me. My life is so hard. Look at all of this. Like, be real with yourself. You're not any different than the next person in terms of you have flesh. We all do. Nobody's different. Nobody's better or worse. Just because they, just because someone decides to classify certain sins in a hierarchy and a, some are worse and some are not as bad. So God's going to be less displeased with you. If you just tell a little white lie, but God's going to be really mad at you and he's going to punish you. If you're watching porn or you're stealing from a bank or whatever, you're punching old ladies or punching old dudes, whatever. It doesn't have to be old people. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, man. That's the point. There is no hierarchy of sin. Sin is sin. If you fail in one point, you fail in the whole. Every per single person has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is no need for you to try and save face. There is no need for you to try and save face because you want to dance the dance of religion. You look like a fool dancing the dance of religion. The people there who are doing the dance with you, they're not interested in you. They're interested in themselves and their own dance being clapped and applauded. They're not interested in Jesus Christ and shining forth the word. They're not interested in spiritual things. They're not interested in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and enjoying Jesus Christ's life. They are interested in themselves. Again, it is astounding to me that well, it is and it isn't, right? It's astounding to me that these things are still happening, but at the same time, it's not astounding because we were told it was going to happen. It was just going to increase. So that's not surprising at all. But speaking to fellow believers who can't get out, can't get out from the cycle of manipulation and beatings and spiritual abuse and the addiction of religion, people who can't get out from under that, what do you have to lose by just deciding, you know what, dude, I, I can't take this anymore? How is your conscience? Is your conscience seared? Do you still have some sensitivities to the Lord? Well, I'll tell you that if you're a believer, it's all right. God's going to take care of you. God's not going to lose a single one of his. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you can be serious with yourself and ask these questions. Like, what do, you, what, what, what do I really stand to gain by staying in this church that constantly is abusing me, lying to me, and feeding my flesh? What do I stand to gain? Okay, you know what? Oh, what I stand to gain is not being in the short term temporarily oh i won't be like ridiculed by man i won't be 
I won't make these people upset because I decided to leave their church or I decided to leave the little Bible study or the friend group, whatever, because this is all they peddle in is, is flattery and manipulation and guile and uh, virtue sting, signaling, excuse me, but yet, but there's no preaching of Christ and they call it fellowship. Again, they're using the same language, but they're changing the definition or watering things down or, or ripping the meat and the, and the, the sustenance out of these things. And it's all empty because there's no mention of Jesus Christ. There's no fellowship without Jesus Christ. You can call it whatever you want. I talked with someone years ago when I was still in Galatian air, but there was things that I was like, I was coming out of that and I was learning and all by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And they, uh, they thought that just going and hanging out with people who they thought were believers, that was fellowship, which when I asked the last time they quote unquote fellowship together, they went to a bar, had a couple beers and watched a sports game. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's not fellowship. That's hanging out and that's fine. But don't call it fellowship. You're just hanging out. <laughs> like you're just you're just going to hang out, grab a beer, grab some food, grab some drinks, whatever. And you're there to watch a sports game. You're there to watch some music. You're there to throw darts. You're there to play shuffleboard. It doesn't matter what it is. You're there to play soccer. Although that'd be a really large bar if you could play soccer at the bar. It doesn't matter what it is. You're you're hanging out though. There's no there's no speaking of Christ and Him crucified. There's no enjoyment of sharing the word together. Again, the preaching of Christ, because there's no fellowship without Christ. So don't call it fellowship if it's not. And I say that again, like there's absolutely nothing wrong with going and hanging out with people, right? I just had people over yesterday and it was nice. I haven't seen these, these guys in a while. And um, if they were actually one of the, they're like high school friends and they were the first so, – yeah, they were the first people that I told when I first believed. And turns out they also believed and never mentioned it. So they were just carnal believers, and that's fine. And we hang out. We have a good time. We've been friends for 20 years, so we're just like hanging out, playing games, barbecuing, whatever. But I'm not going to think to myself, oh, there's like real nice fellowship in here when we're really just hanging out. There's no fellowship without Christ. There's nothing wrong with hanging out. I'm not belaboring that point. That's a, that's a huge tangent. That doesn't matter. But don't think that – thank you. Circling back to what I was talking about. Don't think that virtue signaling and a quote-unquote love walk and just being nice to each other and in the same vicinity – that that determines what fellowship is. So these people that these churches they're like, no, well you gotta you gotta gather for fellowship. How are you gonna fellowship with people who have false gospels or, or unsound doctrine? How are you gonna fellowship with people who will not preach Christ and Him crucified, but are constantly pointing you to your flesh and trying to dull your senses to the truth of Jesus Christ, who are trying to blind you and stuff your ears so you will not hear the truth of Jesus Christ. They don't want you looking at Jesus Christ. They want you looking at them. They want you looking at them and yourselves, and they want you to come to them and look for affirmation and look up to them and worship them, and that's their wage. How is that fellowship? What, what are you gaining by staying in that church if that's what you think fellowship is? You got to have the correct definition. You got to have the correct understanding. And again, I, I did not come to this knowledge myself. The Lord has really done some, I mean, we can all attest to the miracles the Lord works in us, right? And the knowledge that he gives us. We read his word. We say yes and amen. Some people plant, some people water. The Lord gives the increase at the right time. It's, this video is all over the place. Apologies. But whatever, it's a fairly strong word, but I felt like it was necessary because I just had more people – like in this last post that I just did, I said trolls are going to be faced with the truth eventually. And I hope that it's sooner rather than later that they 
stop the games and they believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, and someone comments, is, uh, comments the Son of God or God the Son, quote unquote, is not in Scripture per se. I was like, dude, you're trolling on a post about trolls. You probably think it's hilarious. Great, great bit you got going. So I asked them what the what the gospel is. I asked him if he believed that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, paid the debt on the cross for all of our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day for our justification. A couple hours go by, no response. Why? Because they don't actually care about the truth. They just want to argue. They just want to play games. They just want to throw fiery darts at people's consciences, and they just want to kill, steal, and destroy the children of God. They don't actually care about the truth. What is the point? Again, not surprised, not not angry about it, other than like righteous anger, just like, yo, shut up and <laughs> believe the truth. Because what is the point of arguing for that? When you don't, if like, if you don't have the gospel, you have nothing to add to this conversation, so don't add anything. But, you know, that's that's sort of besides the point. That's that's just what they do. That's their thing. They just want to kill, steal and destroy the children of God. They want to they want to steal your confidence, which we have in Christ. A lot of them, a lot of them are false brethren crept in unawares to steal and to spy out and steal our liberty, which we have in Christ. They don't want us to stand by faith. They want us to crawl on our hands and knees as slaves in the law. They want us to be chained and they want to have the whip and saying, whoopsha, get to work, get to work, you lazy sinners, while they themselves are eating grapes and sipping a mojito thinking they're hot stuff and they're the most holy and righteous person because they're abusing and manipulating people. It's ridiculous. Again, it's nothing new. We knew this was going to happen. Uh, I hope they listen to this video and I hope the Lord breaks them and they hear the truth. I know it took me, I would say, 15 years this is before i was a believer but i was like looking for the truth it took the lord like 15 years i'd say 12 15 years to break me and for me to run out of strength and i was literally ready to commit suicide and that's not the same for everybody you don't have to get to that spot for everybody okay i'm i'm just sharing my own personal experience i was like i was so done i was so ready to give up on life and everything and blah, 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 something happened. But anyway, the Lord broke me and I was like, oh, I was ready to receive the truth. I had heard the truth here and there over the course of my life. Again, those little seeds were planted. And eventually the Lord gave the increase at his perfect timing when I was ready to receive the truth. And hallelujah, I believed. And without even, I feel like, hearing the gospel... Over the last 15 or 20 years, it just started coming out of me because it's Jesus Christ himself. It's not dead letter that I'm here to memorize that saves me like, or a dead letter that I'm here to follow and obey that saves me. No, it is Jesus Christ himself that died for our sins. It is his finished redemptive work on the cross. He paid the debt for us. He offered up his blood through the eternal spirit. Hallelujah. He was buried and he rose again on the third day for our justification. Brothers and sisters, you believe that and you are eternally saved. Someone tried to argue with me today. Oh, so you think it's how, how do you know if you're really born again? And is it transformation or how do you really know? And I was like, well, we're known. You're asking how to identify a believer. What do they believe? What do they speak and what do they believe? Because if we, Know people by what they believe. So it's our profession of faith. And then they tried to take that, which is ridiculous, what they did. They tried to take that and say, oh, so it's just a profession of faith. It's not actually transformation. It's like, no, look, this is what I'm talking about. You're a troll. You're trying to start an argument. You're taking what I'm saying out of context. You're taking what I'm saying and twisting it. And if you actually listen to anything that I preach about, you would know my answer because I give it in almost every single video. The just shall live by faith. 
We are saved by grace through faith. It is not by works. It is a gift of God. You believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day for your justification. You are saved. This person wanted to insert their own leaven, insert their own pet doctrine. They wanted to insert their flesh, give it a pass and call it holy, and try to get other people over to their side to steal people away from the simplicity in Christ. I present the simplicity in Christ to this person. They said, oh, so it's just a profession of faith. There's no transformation. Is Paul Was Paul's uh, conversion, was it just a profession of faith or was it so much more? They, had pressed, they added a bunch of O's to so to try and emphasize, to try and be condescending, to try and come in with guile and subversive attitudes and tones. What is the point? The point is, the root is, the motivation is, they want to be put on display. They don't want them, because that comes down to, oh, okay, so it's a transformation, right? So then how do you, this is what their thinking is. So it's, oh, it's not just a profession of faith. You actually have to believe, oh, so there's a transformation involved. So how do you tell if there's a transformation involved? Oh, so you tell by a changed life and a going to church and tithing. You can tell by good works that they do and all of these things and blah, 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 and that they love the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and they feed the homeless, and they, they take care of the poor and widows, and look at all these things. So you're telling me that the transformation, someone is truly saved, and you can tell by works. Dead works in religion. No, no mention of Jesus Christ. No mention of Jesus Christ and his finished redemptive work. All just manipulation, guile, and subversive tones because they just wanted to argue. So, of course, I deleted it because that's annoying. <laughs> the last thing I asked them was, why don't you just profess the what you believe? Rather than coming with condescending and leading questions, and again, with guile and subversion, why not just, if you disagree with me and you think it's so much more, why not, if you just if you disagree with me, just put on display your beliefs? Or are you afraid that your lies are going to get called out? And, lo and behold, they did not put their own beliefs on display. I said, like, look, my, what I believe is public. I don't have to answer this. And granted, I already did, but you're twisting it to try and prove your point of self-righteousness. That's what it boils down to. So rather than being full of guile, why not just put on display what you believe? And we can dissect it right here and now. Guess what? They didn't. No surprise. Because they're just little troll keyboard warriors doing nothing. Rejecting the truth. Enjoying jumping through hoops in the religious evil age, and they get off on manipulation. They enjoy they enjoy damaging, manipulating, abusing, and twisting people's conscience and twisting the word so that people are full of fear and condemnation. Which we know. I mean, I've said this a bunch, but I guess I just said it in a different way and this time. I don't know, dude. I don't care. This is what I wanted to talk about. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, but that's the end. Um, hey, come on. I want to make some food. Let's go. Uh, so that's what I want to talk about. Come on. I pray that this message was a blessing to someone. I hope, I know it was a lot of talking about unbelievers and Galatianized believers and sort of confronting them and hopefully pricking their conscience and offending them. And at the same time, brothers and sisters, I hope that these, these types of videos and conversations stir in you your confidence in Christ because all of this, all of that I talk about is pointing to Jesus Christ and him crucified. There is nothing that I can do that is of any gain or any value but point you to Jesus Christ because I Pray that you would gain an increase in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, an increase in the rest and the realness and the 
tangible experience of Christ as life so that your conscience would be free so that you would enjoy your justification, so that you would boast in Christ, so that you would just be full of joy and peace and satisfaction in Christ Jesus. There's nothing I can say that would be any better. Like, what, what, what would I gain? What would I gain? Let's ask myself this question. What would I gain from preaching Moses, Levin, vain jangling nonsense to you guys? I would gain... Subscribe. Well, I would probably lose subs because you guys are here for the truth. Hallelujah. But I would gain a whole lot of people full of fear, death, and condemnation and shaking in their boots and afraid to see God and thinking that Jesus Christ is going to beat them. And there would be no peace at all. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, peace with God is so amazing, so important, so enjoyable. But I, I am stirred, not obligated, but I am stirred to a point where I cannot speak anything else to you guys. I cannot speak anything else. I can't, I, my conscience would not allow it. By the grace of God, hallelujah, it is only Jesus Christ in us. That is shining. It is only Jesus Christ in us that is coming out as life and as peace, as joy and satisfaction. And that is such a real and amazing experience. And to, 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 to know God and to be known of God is so real and so perfect and so mind-boggling awesome. awesome. Man, English, guys, how do, you, how do we do this? How do speak good? The peace with God is so amazing that why would i want to do anything but share it why would i want to spread fear death and condemnation what the what is the point there is none the motivation of that would be to control to be put on to, to have myself put on display getting your eyes off of Christ is what all these people are doing to have my flesh tickled with this sense of empowerment because I'm, I'm affecting people's emotions in a negative way so that they come crawling back to me for more information, for more false peace of like, oh, well, you did a good job today, so maybe God's pleased with you. No, dude. That's, that's such garbage. I hope you guys can see just how wicked and disgusting that is. And that's what so many of these people love. A lot of people, I'm just going to final clarifying note. A lot of what I said could be applied to unbelievers and Galatianized believers, but there is a there are nuances and there are distinct differences in which if they are Galatianized believers, absolutely there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. If they have believed the gospel, they are saved and they have just been carried off as spoil and the Lord will not lose a single one of his. So anything that is you think is too firm of language or is questioning people's Salvation, which I'm not doing. I'm I, I, literally the point of this is to me is me telling you. You know people by what they believe. You can know a brother or sister because they preach Christ and Him crucified. You you can know a brother or sister because they won't deny the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, because they know it's true. Because Christ in them, it's the Holy Spirit witnessing to the truth within them. Um, and then yeah, the. Marking and avoiding, you got to do that for both people, for both for both group sets, because they're not preaching Christ and them crucified. The uh, very strong language of you're like you're just an you're just an evil worker. You're just being subversive. You subversive. You are manipulating, being full of guile on purpose because you want to kill, steal, and destroy the children of God. You want to steal their confidence. You want to kill and destroy them. It's pretty clear that those are for unbelievers. Those are for the religious Pharisees, the American Pharisees, as I like to call them sometimes. But hey, it's no different. You could be in, you could be in any country and put country name then Pharisee, and it would be the same group of people. It is all people who try to replace Christ with a taskmaster, who either want to replace Christ completely, again, or just they just reject the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's and those people should ask themselves, what do I stand to gain from this? 
why do I fight so adamantly against God? Because uh, it's not a good look. And the strong warnings for my fellow believers who are Galatianized, for real. Let go of the flesh. It's all right. It's gross. You're not doing anybody a favor by spraying perfume on a piling or a, a corpse that is covered in piles of poop, dude. You're not you're not doing anybody a favor by presenting your dead works. People don't want to accept that they are dead works because again, dead works are you trying to earn something from God that is freely secured for you in justification. So you trying to gain peace and make God proud by sinning less or repenting of your sins. Now, all of that is secured for you in justification. So your sackcloth and ashes is dead works, but they don't like that because it's there. It's part of their identity. A lot of people just have their identity in religion rather than in Jesus Christ. And I would encourage you to rip the bandaid off. You're going to suffer for a bit, but I can guarantee you because it's Christ himself. It will do it. You will gain Christ. And as Paul talks about in Philippians, count it all as dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You're telling me, oh, but my tithing and I cuss less and I'm and I make sure I do this and that. Like, okay, where is Jesus Christ in all of that? Your emulation is not the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Your emulation is not the truth. Jesus Christ is. So walk by faith. Ugh. <laughs> oh man, there's just so many nuances and, and stuff that you could go on about this that I could clarify, but the video is already long enough, so I'm not going to. I said what I'm going to say. I'm going to drink some pineapple juice and cook some food, so peace out, yo.